Hi everyone, George Farmer here, and today's top tip is about black beard algae or black brush algae, or BBA as it's commonly known. Um, I'm sure most of you have experienced it at some point, and it's probably one of the most frequently asked questions I'll get on algae. And so I thought I'd give you some top tips on how to prevent it and deal with it. Prevention is better than cure, and to prevent algae, well, basically we just need to look after our plants as best we can. So we need to provide appropriate lighting, so that's not too much, but enough to obviously grow the plants. Good CO2 levels if you're using CO2 injection, and by that I mean high end stable enough, but also um, in combination with good circulation, so all the plants are getting access to that CO2. Good nutrient levels, so I like to deliberately slightly overdose nutrients every day and then do a large weekly water change to reset those levels every week. Good maintenance practice, so big water changes every week, keeping the plants free from any collected detritus, keeping your glass clean. And one of the biggest tips is just giving your tank a really big water change only after any maintenance or disturbing the substrate. So let's say you've done all that and you're still getting BBA, I would guess the most common parts of the tank you're getting is either on your wood, slow growing plants or rocks. It's very unlikely you'll get BBA, in fact it's almost impossible to get BBA on healthy growing plants. So what do we do? It's really really stubborn, it's really hard to remove with a toothbrush, it's so sticky. So you, you can use uh, really abrasive toothbrushes uh, or wire brushes even, especially on rocks, but there are potentially easier ways to get rid of it and one of my favourite techniques is to actually uh, drain the aquarium down to expose any BBA so let's say for instance I've got some on the top of this rock here so I would drain the aquarium all the way down to just below where that rock is and then I'll get a paintbrush a small model paintbrush for instance that's never been used for real paint and a cap full of liquid carbon uh, i.e. Seacomb Flourish XL or TNC uh, carbon, there's plenty of liquid carbon products out there which basically uh, form from a solution of glutahaldehyde and water. And I'll get a paintbrush and I'll dip it in a capful of the, the liquid carbon and I'll literally paint the liquid carbon on the, on the algae. And you're not overdosing the, the glutahaldehyde because you're literally only using the paintbrush. And you could, you could even use your full daily dose if you like and, and pour it in your cap and then make sure you don't obviously use more than that cap's worth and you know you're not going to overdose. Um, so I will do that and I'll just leave, leave the glutahaldehyde dried on the, on the carbon for uh, 30 seconds or so and then top up with uh, fresh dechlorinated aquarium water and I can pretty much guarantee that that BPA will have gone within 72 hours. It'll probably turn a pink colour and then it'll gradually disappear. Um, some shrimp like to eat it once it's dyed uh, but very few animals will actually eat BBA. There are a few out there. So I hope that kind of helps a bit about BBA. It is a nasty algae, one of the most stubborn out there, uh, but with good prevention and hope the top tip I've used about spot dosing uh, a liquid carbon, hopefully it won't be too much of a problem for you. Thanks for watching, keep on scoping. Cheerio.